I didn't want to do a long-term review of my Porsche Cayenne until I had some updates. And boy, do I have some updates. <laughs> What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I'm sitting out here with my 2009 Porsche Cayenne. This is the base model. It's the V6 3 liter, no turbos or anything, no frills SUV, but this thing has been a trooper for me. And I got this uh, a few years ago because I really like the shape of this Porsche. Now, it's really a first generation. I think they call it a second generation. And really, the only thing that was different over the original Cayenne here was the front end. And I actually really liked it. It was a little bit more flatter, a little more aggressive. And I just didn't look as like guppy fished as the very, very first Porsche Cayenne. And so I really fell in love with this style and I wanted to get one. And I needed an SUV. You know, this is a vehicle that is not something that I baby. It's not a garage queen. Uh, really, on bad weather days, on heavy snow days, when I'm going on unpaved roads or in rough conditions, this is the truck I take because it's great. It's just an all round good vehicle. And I was actually really worried about it. I think like a lot of people about the maintenance and running costs of this vehicle. Now I will say that I have put nothing but regular gasoline in this little bad boy. And I think it has been just fine. I will say that I have done some regular maintenance things on it. And I'm going to go over those first, but this last year was very expensive. And so I want to talk about what that is and kind of my thoughts on the expense of what I had to do to keep this car on the road. So first of all, when I got this, it had about uh, 50,000 miles on it. Three years later, it has about 70,000 miles on it. So that's where I stand at the moment. So it gets driven pretty averagely, maybe just slightly below average annual mileage for a car. You do have to get oil changes on this. And I will tell you that I take it to an independent German place and they charge me $290 for an oil change. I don't know what the dealership charges. That seems a little expensive for an oil change, but it is synthetic. I get that it's a little more and I get that probably there's some undercarriage stuff that needs to be removed. So keep that in mind. The other thing I had to do was replace the brakes and rotors all around. I took it to an independent shop to do that and they charged me a little over $900 for everything, which actually seemed like a really good deal. Actually on my Audi A4, they charged me a little over $1,000 to do brakes on that one. So I'm not sure why it was cheaper on my Porsche Cayenne to do the brakes and rotors on this one, but I was pretty happy with that. But I actually thought that was a pretty fair price. So uh, in terms of the regular maintenance on this car, that seemed to be just fine. Now, other than that, I really had no big issues until this last year, uh, a few months ago, I started to get a check engine light on and the first thing I did when I got it is I just put in one of my old scanners and cleared the code took a look at it it's a Porsche specific code and I just wanted to see if it would come back on and sure enough about a week later it came back on so I did a little looking online and it looked like this code is actually fairly common on Cayennes and it's not the simplest thing to fix. It's not just a loose gas cap or a broken wire, those types of things. So I took it to the dealership because I really wanted to get it done right and not necessarily sink any more money into it than I needed to. Now, one of the things that I needed to do when I uh, took it to the dealership was also get a transmission fluid flush on here, a transmission service. So I did that as well. That was probably a little overdue. I felt the sh like the shifts were just a little bit harsh, a little bit more perceptible than I would have liked. And so I probably could have done that a couple years ago, but I finally took it to the dealership and did it. Now, one of the things that I want to tell you about the transmission fluid flush is that it seems like it's pretty standard. Just a removal of the pan, possibly the filter and then new fluid. And I would have kind of thought that'd be three, four, five, maybe six hundred dollars at an independent shop and I should have probably shopped it around a little bit but since I was at the dealership already I was too lazy to tell them not to do it that transmission fluid service cost one thousand three hundred and seventy eight dollars so that was the most expensive transmission fluid flush I have ever paid for in fact uh, when I had a previous generation Audi one of the things that you had to do if you wanted to get the fluid flushed on that is they had to drain it out and then pump the fluid back in so it was pretty expensive and you had to pre-measure the fluid so I get why that was a little more expensive i don't think that this is like that so it was a little surprising to me that that was almost fourteen hundred dollars for the transmission service but i would say that as far as i can tell it's running a little smoother the shifts are a little bit better so the big thing now that check engine light that check engine light code was p12a2 which has something to do with fuel pressure unrealistic or something like that. On my scanner, it doesn't give you a really good description because it's a Porsche specific code. So I took it in and told them that I pulled the code. They verified that. And what ended up happening is that they found some vacuum leaks. And so they replaced the valve cover gaskets, the uh, injector seals. And when they were in there, they also found that the actuator rod 
for the throttle body was also broken or was about to break and I think it broke when they removed it so that obviously had to be replaced I don't know that that was any contributing factor to the problem but I'm glad that they found it when they did and plastic rubber those types of things on age and extreme temperatures just tends to break so that wasn't that big of a replacement that was actually hundred and fourteen dollars for that part so not a huge deal on that but they replaced that and the fuel pressure sensor here. So all in for that, I was actually a little surprised that it came out to $1,954, minus $113 if that actuator rod hadn't been broken. But uh, $2,000 actually to fix that check engine light code was actually a fairly good deal, I thought. So uh, $2,000, if you do get the P12A2 code, I might suggest taking it to the Porsche dealer because it seems like a lot of guys that are trying to figure this out on their own are kind of doing one thing after another. And I've heard of guys spending three, $4,000 to try to fix this and I'll tell you what I mean there may be different reasons for the code to come up on different cars but I was actually pretty happy I was a little worried about the total repair costs on this car taking it into the dealership on something that was maybe a little more nebulous but I was actually pretty impressed with that and I would say that actually after three years take away the maintenance stuff that I knew that I was going to do brakes and oil changes and all that really to have an unexpected expense of two thousand dollars to get the engine back running and now I've had it running here for a few months without the check engine light coming back on I'm really actually happy with that so I've had about a two thousand dollar unexpected expense over three years and twenty thousand miles with this Porsche Cayenne which is actually really great I think so far the experiment of buying the Cayenne has been a success so if you are thinking of buying a used Cayenne like this I think you know from my experiences at least it's not been as bad as many first-time Porsche owners might think it is so hey if you want to check out any Porsche gear I'll put links to it in the description below Peter Von Panda out <laughs>